Hello, everybody, and welcome to another virtual visit. I'm David Mustin, and Director of Communications for the Dearborn Public Schools. This is a beautiful May 1st for us, but of course, you'll be watching this at another time at your leisure. Joining us today, as always, is our superintendent of the Dearborn Public Schools, Dr. Glenn Malenko. Glenn, how are you doing today? Good. Doing well, David. I think you uh, you listened. Uh, the weather's coming nice this weekend. We're looking forward to it. I, I told you last time that you need to bring the good weather the next time we're on, and you did. So uh, yeah, well, you know, how are you doing, David? Uh, doing well. Doing well. Uh, I'm in the uh, inside studio today, although with the weather, I should be in the outside studio, uh, but uh, maybe next time. You know, and I see, I do listen to you, see, when you tell me to- There you go. You, know, you do, right? yeah. <laughs> I've kept my job for another day. Uh, yeah, sure. Of... Yeah, what, what is your, oh, your evaluation's waived for one year, so I okay. guess, right? Yes, yeah. I'm yeah. safe. <laughs> I guess I'm safe. Um, yeah, speaking of uh, keeping jobs and uh, keeping mm -hmm. track of staff and doing all the good things that uh, uh, our HR department needs to do, because we do have an exceptional staff, and so... Um, but there is somebody who kind of keeps track of all of that, and that is our executive director of staff and student services, both. Uh, she wears a couple of hats there, is um, executive director Mesa Mali Bazzi. Mesa, thank you for joining us today. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. And as you said, it is sunny today, and I hope it's sunny when this is viewed. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I... I I think it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, uh, that uh, during these past couple of months, uh, our entire staff has just really stepped up from teachers and custodians and food service and principals. I mean, the list goes on and on. All 2,700 people really have just stepped up in a way that uh, it, you just can't compare it to anything else. And uh, we really, you know, we, we want to thank them for all that great work that they've done. No, I just, just to reiterate, I, I agree with David there, and I'll let you kind of jump in as HR. I know you've been doing a great job and leading the way, and there's been a lot of uh, complicated things that have gone on since we've had shutdown under the governor's orders. So appreciate that. And again, the great work that you're doing in your department to ensure that our staff is able to work and continue to work, whether that be from home or in the building as essential workers. So thank you, Ms. Ali Bez. That's actually what I was going to say is I wanted to just start and make sure that we got in here with our 10 minutes together that a uh, huge thank you to all of our staff, our um, administrators, our teachers, our non-instructional staff. Uh, some are working in different classifications because their position, uh, like for example, bus drivers are not able to work at this time and so they uh, are able to work in other areas as needed and we appreciate that everyone's all hands on deck have have really been what has kept this district afloat and and floating in the in a good direction in the right direction and um, of course I said administrators parents staff um, and a shout out to all the staff and to all the community members whether you're a staff member or not that has been working home from home and also taking care of families and doing double duty 24 seven. I have to admit this is the first time in a while I've done my hair or my makeup. So I feel you. And <laughs> I feel the I feel your pain and your challenge and uh, just a huge thank you and, and know that it's recognized. Um, so I wanted to just start by saying that. And then Eric kind of, uh, you know, forced you to put on the, the headphones. Next time we're getting you those earbuds, right? David's wearing them though, too, right? So yes. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so. I, 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 th I think we also, you know, um, one of the things that really makes it work so well here uh, is there's some great partnerships with our unions uh, as well and some good leadership there. So absolutely. We have, um, you know, I just touched on in a joking manner about, you know, I feel your pain doing the double duty, but that really leads me to uh, one point that I wanted to highlight today is that our Alliance is our new employee assistance program. And that was developed or selected, not developed, but it was selected by a collaborative effort from all our union leadership and our district leadership. And what Alliance provides our staff members, because we know if our staff members have the tools they need and the resources they need to ensure that they have a good mental health, um, 
to have good mental health and also have a variety of resources, even child care resources, legal resources, uh, personal goals. We have counselors available, coaching available for personal goals that are not even related necessarily to their uh, work within the district, but that having an all-around healthier person means that they will do a better job providing for their own personal family and also professionally for what they the service they provide to the district and to the students in our district. And so Uliance, ironically, has been... Um, it's been a process and ironically it was the the goal was to roll it out on april 1st but the timing couldn't have been more perfect because we do understand that staff and parents are under a lot of pressure and if i could give any message it's uh, learn what good enough means and do your best and um, take time to reflect and understand that things are not going to look or feel the way they have looked and felt in the past for anyone and that is okay so I did want to share that. And, and I, th I think it's a, yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad you're, sh you're sharing that, uh, Mason, because I think it's important right now. You know, we're all in this together. You know, we have staff, but staff have families too. They have children. Um, I know your children, I've seen them. I have two teenage children. You have younger children, but we have staff, we have teachers, we have food, food service members who are doing great frontline work to keep people fed. And they all have families as well. And so we're all dealing with this. And I, I, I've kind of said it on other shows where I've gone on is that we're in this together. So we got to work together because there's stress for everybody. And the fact that you're, the HR is providing that, I am very proud that we are providing that extra support, um, you know, for our employees, because that's just a reminder to parents too, that are out there is that, you know, um, when, when teachers are providing instruction do, during the day, even if they are from home, they're taking care of their own kids as well. And I, I know, for example, I was just in between a meeting uh, I've been on this uh, meets all, all day, but in between I had to touch base with my son's teacher and then I had to talk to him and check out an assignment, make sure the proper information. So we can all relate as parents and employees of the district and just the fact that we're all dealing with this crisis. And obviously our thoughts and prayers go out to those that are dealing with crisis mm -hmm. directly, you know, those who have uh, unfortunately uh, tested positive or, or passed away from COVID-19. And so this support, I really appreciate you taking the lead on that. Thank you. Also, we have um, uh, today, I believe, is a food service um, food workers, National Food Workers Day. Is that right, Dr. Maleko? Yeah, it's a food food workers appreciation day. Uh, and I, I did send out a, a notice to them. And so they're in the front line. They're working hard and we are providing that every day. I know you had a letter of agreement, too, that you're allowing um, additional compensation for those that are exposed to the to the public with Mr. Al Arini and DFSC. Um, so I know you worked hard to to recognize them as well. Yes, very excited to be able to offer that to our food service employees as they are the most closely interacting with the, the public and our communities. Um, I think it's important to note a few different things is that the food service program funds their own program. And so the funding that is used for the food service program and to pay staff and to pay this hazard pay is generated from the actual food service program. And it doesn't impact the general fund. It doesn't impact any other areas. And the law says that that money that's generated has to be put back and used in the food service area. And so we are thankful that we're able to provide our food service employees a, a hazard slash hero stipend pay for the time that they've been working as it is recognized that um, we want them recognized. We want to, them to know that we are thankful for them as well. Um, also, I think it's important just to note, which I I'd mentioned previously on another um, show, was just that our district, uh, the food program that we provide is part of a requirement of our continuity for learning plan that was submitted to Wayne Risa, um, just recently submitted and approved. Um, much pride for all of our staff that participated on that. We had teachers and our um, cabinet members, our directors, we had, uh, it was a collaborative effort, our unions. So um, congratulations for that plan being approved. But a component of that plan is that the district is providing a food service program to our students and to our families. Um, one last note on that is that it's important to note that the funding for the food service program comes from the federal government. It does not impact the general fund. So we get funding based on per for pupil, per pupil spending, and that is a completely separate fund 
Um, and the money that we get from the federal government that is um, uh, facilitated by the, at the state level is not to be used for any other purpose. So we couldn't take money from the food program, for example, to hire more teachers or to add more custodians. It is intended by the federal government to be used for the food service program exclusively. And I know David uh, and Mason, you know, we were talking about this other program that is food uh, benefits that the district has put out called the SNAP federal program uh, that is being um, provided and implemented through the state bridge card program. Mm -hmm. That is a benefit to uh, the children of the Dearborn community uh, because uh, Dearborn is uh, through the federal government does receive the lunch for all students. And, and David, I know we put some information out on that as well. Um, so if the community gets questions, we really can't answer all the questions other than we can provide information and say it's a benefit. Now, my understanding is those that do not want to uh, accept the benefit, which I, I heard and I'm not exact on here, but it's about $100 a month per child of De in Dearborn that, you know, they, they can just ignore it and, the, and they do not need to use it if that's their choice. And you put that out, right, David, that information, I believe, through the district cha channels. Correct. Yeah, we put out some information, uh, just shared information, passed it along on our first bell. So if you go to the first bell website, uh, linked right on our front page of Dearborn Public Schools, uh, and look through some of the older articles, because we did put that information out actually last week, I believe it was April 21st, we put that information out about that state program that is being sent, uh, a benefit that is being sent to parents here in Dearborn, not our funds, not our funding. Uh, we really don't have anything to do with that other than, like we said, just to share some information about it. If parents uh, receive that bridge card and are not in need of those funds, uh, we were told that they could just destroy the card. And then those funds that are in that program would then be able to be redirected to those who do need those funds. Um, and so I think that that's important to know. Thank you. Appreciate that clarification. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, you know, like we said, a lot of good stuff going on as far as our staff goes, uh, really pitching in and coming together during this time and really appreciate all of that. I love the new employee assistance program. Uh, because when, you know, it's free to our staff and it does offer a lot of great benefits, uh, just listening to what Mason was telling us about there, uh, many times people think that uh, employee empl employee assistance programs are just, you know, to help connect them with maybe some mental health uh, providers or some things along those lines. But this sounds way more inclusive than that and uh, covers a wide variety of topics that our employees can take advantage of. So uh, may some thank you and thank our union leadership uh, for all coming together to select a great program that will benefit our staff uh, in uh, not only now, but, you know, in the years uh, ahead. Dr. Hey, Malenko. Wait. Yep. Mason. Oh, thank I you just both. wanted to jump in. Sure. Yeah. One, jump one in. more, one more, um, <laughs> piece of information I think that some people would want to know about is for student services is that registration and, and student enrollment is still occurring and for questions they could call 313-495-4004. Again that's for student services registration and enrollment and that phone number is 313-495-4004 and again that's during regular business hours but if there's questions about enrolling students for school currently or for next school year, that's the number that they would call. Thank you for that. Letting me add that in there. <laughs> no, no problem. I, like I said, you wear many hats, uh, yeah. student services and HR, uh, both fall under your jurisdiction. So thank you for adding that in. Yeah. We're, you know, we're open for business. The buildings are closed, but we're, we're open for business and we're enrolling kids for next year already. Uh, I, I know I talked with, uh, uh, Abe Mishur, our director of student services, and uh, he said they are busy over there as well. And and that's a good sign. We want people to know, you know, we're ready to go and we want them to enroll. Mason, thanks for taking some time to join us today. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Maleko, Glenn, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I wanted to give a shout out. We talked about the food service, but today yeah. is National Principals Appreciation oh, Day. So thank yeah. you to all our principals. And then by the time this gets published, um, 
it, it'll be teacher appreciation week, I believe. So <laughs> happy teacher appreciation week. And I'll have a one minute message that will go out. But I just wanted to uh, extend my appreciation to all the teachers. And a week ago, it was administrative professionals, David and David. And I know we had our um, we had our virtual administrative yeah. professionals lunch. And so there's just a lot of great staff and I'm glad staff are getting uh, recognized. And I just wanted to throw that out there as well and just say thank you to all those classifications and the great staff that we have in Dearborn schools. Absolutely. Wishing everyone all the best for safe and happy, ha safe and healthy days ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank all of you for taking just a couple of minutes to stop by and visit with us and hear this great information and uh, news and things that are going on in the Dearborn Public Schools. Please stay tuned and uh, we'll catch you next time on our next virtual visit.